So, okay, so today is uh, 3rd of March 2024 and um, today is um, uh, a big opportunity that I have to review these two cars. Um, so, of course, uh, most of you uh, watching my videos already know what model of project vehicle these are. Um, so these are what I usually call V6 Coupe. Pojo, Pojo V6 Coupe. And um, I don't think there's any other cool Pojo did with a V6 engine. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think so. So these are the only Coupe they did that had the V6 engine. So that's quite interesting. If I'm um, forgotten, probably you guys can remind me, but I don't, I don't think. Or if I remember, I'll mention if in case there are not, there are more than uh, these uh, two models with the V6 engines. So now this is a um, 406. So um, the production started uh, 1995. And if I'm not mistaken, I stopped in 2004. Uh, so now this now replaced this. So this was um, yeah. a replacement of this. So this is a uh, 407. Uh, we started in 2004. The, no, I think the the coupe or coupe, depending on how you pronounce it. For the 407, um, it started, uh, was it 2006? I think it was around 2006. I don't know if I, it didn't start. I know 407 saloon uh, wagon, they all started in uh, 2004, but I think the this version of the 407 uh, kicked off in 2006, the cell, uh, if I'm not mistaken, unless I'm wrong. So let's just leave it at 2006 or 2005 up to uh, 2010 that's when the 407 uh, coupe either 2010 or 2011 because i know the last version of the 407 coupe or uh, coupe uh, had um, a diesel engine which is the 3.0 hdi engine uh, i think probably also had a 2.0 liter diesel engine uh, those are the last uh, 407 coupe that we have produced the petrol version and that uh, I think probably 2009 or 8, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so so that's about it in terms of which we pay for. So this is the predecessor, this is the successor. Okay, so um, now uh, let's look at the body features. In terms of the looks, you know, people um most people prefer the looks of the 406 why prefer the looks of the 407 coupe the two of them so um so i can't tell you okay which one is looks better because like i said it looks very constant looks yeah it could say subjective but there's some are very obvious that you know i mean this is beautiful handsome you know like you say you see a woman you can tell a beautiful woman from one that is not that beautiful you know, that it doesn't matter how subjective you want to classify it, uh, you know, uh, if you are, you are. So, uh, same thing, um, something that looks good, you know, however, it's only when you come to details that you could start saying, okay, maybe you prefer this because it has this particular uh, design of the body or feature of the rest. So, that is it. Um, what I could tell you is this, like I said, uh, so there is something that is not, okay, I won't use the word, uh, what's word I'm trying to use, um, okay, as in, a fact, let's just leave it at that, let's put that as a fact is fact, uh, this is more masculine in terms of the look than this, it doesn't mean this is feminine look, but this has a more masculine, aggressive look the the successor which is the 407 coupe than the 406 coupe um now this one looks um um how do you call it is this matter 
uh, but looks sportish. So um, it now depends on which one you find. One, the one that looks more aggressive, or the one that um, I don't know that looks. I don't know. I try to find a better word to describe the look of the uh, the cook four six. Um, so let's go around so that I look at both vehicles well. Um, so this is the rear view. Um, no, uh, most people prefer the looks of 406 Coupe than the 407, uh, to be honest. Uh, most people prefer this one to this. Um, okay, so anyway, other features, other... Uh, differences on the exterior look. Um, this is longer. The 407 coupe is longer than the uh, 406 coupe. Coupe, whatever. So in terms of the length, that's what I mean. Um, in terms of ground clearance, um, unfortunately, both vehicles, their suspension has been um adjusted or modified okay let's use the word modified to increase the the height of the car uh remember for those who have been following my videos this one i increased i put a four cylinder uh suspension four seven four cylinder suspension with the uh, their spring when i mean suspension i mean the shock absorbers currently so also with the spring four seven um, four cylinder uh, shock absorber spring, so it now increase the height of the car. The V6 one usually stays low. However, I've uh, actually gotten the stock uh, shock absorbers for this car, both the front and the rear. The coupe V6 407 petrol. Um, hopefully, they are petrol, but I know from the springs they are meant for the coupe V6. So, um so very virtually soon it's going down again. Right now it's up, it's going down. I have my reasons why I have to go for it. Hopefully those shockers are well because I have to get used ones since new ones are now available. So likewise, uh, the owner uh, said he has also modified the suspension to come take up the car uh, a little bit. So both cars, uh, the grand cars are, have been modified. So I can't really say the factory one, how which one is lower or not. Um, so now other features on the body. Um, you can see this crawl, the lion crawl here. You know, just today, um, which is not on the four six. And um, the fog lamp, so it's a kind of rectangle while the coupe one is um, round. Now, for some models of the 407 coupe, uh, if not all, I can't confirm, I think it's not all. Um, they use a xenon headlight, you know, while this is the usual halogen bulbs. Let's maybe some had that, I'm not sure. 406 had a xenon headlight. I can't confirm at all because at that time it was basically halogen that is it. Um, you find um, almost all the vehicles at the time or most of the vehicles produce new then so uh, xenon halogen uh, but I think there are some that you could also get halogen from the factory or the cook but mostly the bigger EGs come with xenon uh, by what I mean, Zenon. This is white headlight. This is yellowish uh, headlight color. Um, so I think uh, that's about it with the exterior look. Um, now the boots. The boot size is actually very massive. Uh, okay, not so big like that, but it is. Okay, let's look at this one. I have some stuff inside this. You feel yourself. So, um, so these are 400 liters. Oh, these are the shock absorbers I was telling you guys. This is for the rear one. So this is actually 407 
This is Cooper uh, rear shock observers. You can see the connectors uh, for the sensors and the sensor of uh, the shock observer. I, hope, I believe there should be a sensor. It's, I don't know, but I know it was electronic. So uh, the front ones are left at home. So soon I'm going to do the dual. So the boot size, um, yeah. It's about 400 liters. Very big. I mean, almost everything I tour at it. It's only my, the only car I know I've had that has a bigger boot than this is my 607. And uh, when I, my 605, I can't remember if the boot is bigger than that of my 607. I have to remember the details. But both boots are also big anyway. So, um, so this one, uh, there's something under it, so that's why it looks a little bit smaller. So this boot, this is the 406 uh, boot, it's about 399 liters. So just a little bit uh, smaller than this. So um, I think that's about it for the exterior. So now let's, let's look at the interior. Um, because the dashboard is basically the same with the saloon, looks the same. Um, the front seat, of course, a uh, coupe, so you won't have any issue with um, the the leg room. So I have a, I have enough space for the leg room. Now for the the roof liner is bad, so I'm not sure whether. Um, so I have enough. Of course, you can always adjust the seat anyway to come down. So uh, there's enough uh, space uh, between the roof liner and my head. So uh, let's check the the rear door. Um, I think I do it on the passenger side. And that's what really matters. Um, you know, in especially of how big the uh, rear the rear the space on the rear seat. Uh, uh, if a third driver is on the steering wheel, you always have the problem. So you better I check this one. So um, let's see. So uh, this electronically uh, give you space to enter, uh, just like the four seven. Okay. Okay. So automatically it comes back too. I can tell you one thing, uh, this one is more predictable than the 407. 407 or most times you try it, it won't make any move, especially once you enter economy mode. Uh, but it works most of the time, but sometimes it just becomes very annoying. You have to start the car before it makes move. Or sometimes, I mean. Okay, so, what are the leg room? Um, hmm. Not that much space, unless maybe uh, the person in front is not that tall. Then you have to shift. But I'm kind of comfortable, to be honest. Uh, okay, not much space on the headroom space, but at least it's not touching. And my hair can even touch the headrest. So, you know what? An adult can actually sit here comfortably, but remember, it's only for two occupants. This place is not my first city, you know, so, so uh, there's a pocket space where you can put your stuff here. Uh, so you can't sit here, this is very hard. So it's only a second person. So this we are meant for only two. And like I said, it's enough for, this space is enough for an adult. I'm almost 63.5 feet, so, um, and, uh, you know, so, um, so yeah. If you are, if you are, if a family person, you can own this car honestly because this can take adults at the back. Most group you can't even be able to fit in children at the back. Not to think of this. So, um, so but we'll find out uh, if um, the space. For now, I can't say whether the red room is uh, love. You remember, I'm very tall. Um, I can do it like this, and uh, I won't have problem. Oh, the person in front my shift a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now I have more like me. So that the person who is in the front. Um, so in other words, it's not a problem for a tall person to stay at the back of four six cook. Um, so okay. So automatically moves itself up. Um, oh, forgot this here. Sorry for putting this. So let's see how the passenger side is. Okay, wow. Um, I actually have uh, enough. I feel comfortable that I shifted it up. Yes, it still feels um, comfortable. So even now, but my length, as uh, you know, uh, still okay. Six, six by three. What? How do you call it? This is um <sighs> okay so um so you can see enough leg room um and you can see adjust the seat to come down so and I'm comfortable so in other words yeah if uh, an adults four adults can sit in this car comfortably well irrespective of how tall okay I don't know uh, how tall everyone is but I know at my height, it's not a problem. So, okay. So that is it. Um, so let's check the the four seven. Oh, the, both of them also have these features. Whereby, uh, the, the four seven and the four six. When you open the door, the the window drops down. You know. And electronically it does that. When you close it, automatically it goes up. You know, remember it doesn't have frame, so it is um, down to protect uh, the glass from breaking. Um, so let's do it here. I hope this one will go, will, will come back. But what usually happens is this is the full seven. Oh. Um, sometimes it goes up when you push it out, it will go, sometimes it won't go. Then, sometimes when you twist on it, it will not come back. You know? So, let's see. You see? <laughs> it didn't go. Four or seven. Uh, personally, if you are buying four or seven, cool. If you can get one with a manual front seat adjustment, it's better for you. Okay, so. Um, same issue in terms of the space and uh, uh, the leg room. But I think this is came a uh, push. Let me see if we can move up. Uh, I think the car is an uh, economy mode actually. Okay, I think that's why it's not moving. It's not in economy mode. As I know, I usually sit comfortably here, you know. And the rear seat doesn't have enough space. So I think this seat push pulled back. Uh, too much. Um, so now as I look at the address, the front, um, the headroom at the back. Wow, no, this one it has more. Oh, is it? Does it have? Uh, okay, it's kind of similar headroom, but I think I feel more comfortable here in terms of. Um, uh, the headroom than the four six scoop, you know. Or you could say the house actually the same, I can't tell, but I don't, you know. So, as tall as I am, um, I'm okay here. So, um, like I said, the car is now in economy mode and, um, uh, probably just for some reasons, like I said, it refused to. Okay, let's see if this one will move. Because, like I said, 406 can be quite 407. Okay, no, it's the economy mode. Once it's the economy mode, it won't move. You know. So, oh, let's see. No, I had a noise. You see? It's smooth. So, it's not economy mode. Okay. So, Copy back. 
it comes back. So for some reasons, this one is refusing to do the passenger on the right seat. Oh, wow. <laughs> it started working. Okay. Wow, it's working now. Okay, so, I mean, first time I tried it, it didn't work. Now it's worked. Okay, so um, let's see whether the seat can move forward a little. Uh, it didn't move. <sighs> okay, so um, you could say basically two of them are the same in terms of the rear, sp uh, rear seat uh, comfortability for an adult. Uh, good headroom and um, enough uh, leg room for adults. Also, here you can't sit here. Uh, the only difference now is uh, that that pocket is not here for the 407 why the 406 has the storage where i can put something here um no cup holder here um i didn't check whether there's a cup holder for the 406 um so you have um, the usual 407 features okay oh it didn't happen again this time 407 like i said in that case, the 406 is better than the 407. If you have an electronic uh, adjustment seat, you know, it's not as predictable, especially this side for the right hand, uh, you know, left hand wheel drive vehicles. It's always a problem. He, he, he acts when he wants to. Um, so, so, let's sit at the front. I, I know the, the space. Of course, ah, there's too much space here. This is like uh, I'm lying on my bed. Uh, so the seat actually ought to have come up a little bit, you know. So I can understand why my leg, there was no space in uh, on the rear seat. But not enough space. So I ought to have shifted it forward. But now it's standing. Um, this seat feels more sporty than that of the four seats. Uh, the full service seat, yeah, uh, it's more sportier yeah. and um, the full seat oh, looks a little bit more comfortable in terms of softness but this, the full seven oh, is hard on the body more than this so this is sportier yeah. uh, like a bucket seat so this has more better bucket seat shape like a hardcore sports car than that of the full seat um, so so what I'm going to do now is to look at the engine bay uh, so that I uh, talk about it. Uh, okay, hold on. 20 something minutes, okay. So, um, what I'll talk about now, this uh, door card uh, pocket here, let me look at that of 406. I, I think I like that of 407 the dock card uh, storage you can see how small this one is for, for the full six cool. very small I know it can only take a few things um, however this one is uh, massive if you have up to 10 phones it can contain but the full is probably two phones or or there but this one can take more than 10 phones yeah. Uh, so that's the advantage this has. Now both cars uh, also have JBL. Uh, um, you can see this one here. Uh, the four seats also don't have the JBL system. Uh, factor. So for those who don't know what JBL is, you can look it up. Okay, so... Um, okay, so... Let's see. Um, let me, I think I need to open the two. Um, uh, something important that I forgot to mention is uh, the design. The 4 uh, coupe was designed by this. You can see, Pini Farina. So the signature is here on the glove bus. Why the 407 design was uh, in-house, so it was actually 
uh, produce or design in house. That's what I mean by produce. So, uh, for those who don't know what the uh, Pini Farina is, I can look it up. Um, now I'll talk about it. Uh, hold on, this sound, the, this one has broken, so I'm using this to, to hold the car. Hold on. Okay. So, both uh, engine bays are now open. So, let's start with this. So, this is a 2.9 liter. Yeah, you could say it's about 2.4, liters, something like that. So, approximately 3 liters. Uh, PL uh, V6 engine, Pojo Linot uh, engine. So, they were uh, produced by Pojo and Linot to, uh, you know, jointly. And um, it's about 210 horsepower or PS and uh, 280. Five new meter talk. Um, the production started in 2000, and um, so this one is uh, they look alike, you know. Uh, from here, I can't actually tell the difference. However, they are not identical engines. So this succeeded this. So this is the predecessor. This is the successor. So this is um, also same lead car capacity in terms of I'm talking about the size uh, approximately 3.0 liter petrol engine also produced by Pojo and Renault and um, this is two, 211 horsepower or PS um, so just more like uh, one HP difference from this so you can say they are almost the same power uh, in, in HP now in terms of the torque, this one is uh, 290 new meter torque, uh, so five, dif five uh, difference, five, five nm difference between this and this. So, um, so other than that, you could say this the production started in 2004, uh, ended uh, sometime in 2009. So this is the, in other words, this is the last V6 Pojo ever made. So these are the only coupe V6 Pojo ever made. Oh, uh, Pojo C makes coupe, I, I hope I'm, I'm correct. But these are the only V6 coupe they made with V6 engine. So uh, that's why I always call them uh, V6 coupe Pojo cars. So, um, now, this one is more interesting about these two vehicles. These two cars originally came with automatic transmission. This one had uh, originally four-speed automatic transmission, which was a ZF 4HP20, it's a German gearbox. Now this was uh, came, originally came with uh, a six-speed automatic transmission AM6, uh, which is um, is a Japanese gearbox. So, so what that happened was I personally with my team converted these two transmissions from automatic to manual. So this one I converted it from four speed automatic to five speed manual. While this uh, converted it from six speed automatic to six speed manual. You know so like I said I did these conversions, the two of them. Um, and perfectly works very well. Of course, for this one, uh, you'll be getting some notification on the MMT mode function display uh, that your that automatic transmission uh, has a problem, you know, because um, the, I'm still running the engine with the automatic transmission engine ECU. So, uh, the only way for that one is to go off is if you mount, if you swap in, um, manual transmission ECU which will of course come with the BSI the key at the rest so but like I said I mean there's no I don't see the need for that unless you just want the you have the money you want to spend it and um, so you can now look for the manual ECU so that you won't be getting those ones uh, likewise this one when I did it uh, the check engine light stayed on 
and um, kept popping up that um, you know, the check engine light stayed on because of the automatic transmission that was absent since I was running the engine with automatic transmission engine ECU. So I used it for like over a year with that, which meant nothing to me. So though eventually I got the manual transmission ECU for this car and then swapped it in, which came with the BSI. So that's when the check light has gone off. Um, unless maybe something else now trigger. The, like for example, a few days ago, uh, the check light popped back on and uh, the cause was the catalytic converter in the front, you know. Um, which I put it there, was it last year or two years ago? All this aftermarket new one. So I will likely pull it out because the starter of this one is acting up when it's hot. So I'll be changing the starter. At the same time, I will change the uh, this shock absorbers back to the V6 ones, electronically controlled. So when I'm removing the starter, I'll have to remove that catalyst, front uh, bank one catalyst, to be sure that everything is okay. If it's not, yeah, I will deal with it. I want to figure out what to do. But normally, all those aftermarket new ones, they always trigger that one, no matter what you do, once in a while. So, um, so yeah, basically that's it. So, five-speed manual, six-speed manual. Um, now, which is faster? Okay, uh, I know that's also an interesting thing people will want to know. Now, before I go to which one is faster, you have to first look at, since both of them have same power, same engine, not identical, but same engine, uh, same power, not identical anyway. So, however, this one weighs uh, about 1,458 kg or let's just say 1450 okay now i think it's um the the saloon manual vcs of uh, 406 that is about 1450 kg the coupe is a little bit heavier if i'm not mistaken so it's about 1458 kg while this one with the manual transmission uh, is uh 1740 kg so what's the difference hmm so it's basically about over 200 kg. So this has uh, more, has over 200 kg on this. So you can imagine how heavy this car is. So, uh, so back to my question, which one is faster? Of course, same power, same transmission, uh, well, manual. So obviously this is faster. You know, because it's, it has less weight, so the engine will struggle less to pull, so we make it much faster than this. So, um, how fast? What's the difference? Is uh, this is about 7.4 7 .4 seconds, 100 away acceleration, 100 to 0 to 100 uh, acceleration. Uh, so, this is that's it. 7.4, 7.6. I know in other words, it's just seven, just know it's seven second car acceleration. Why this is 8.4? I've tested it confirmed, so about 8.4 acceleration. Um, so, so difference of what like that kind of much because you are looking at about 10 second, 10, I would say 10 seconds uh, difference, you know, that's. Okay, so difference of 10. Is it 10? Hmm. Okay, so now I know the difference 7.4, 7.6, 8.4. I, I, I've, I've got this one correct. I did it like two times, I got it uh, same distance. Okay, so uh, now you can make your choice which one will you go for. Funny enough, these two cars are now going out of the production. No, not the, uh, they've gone out of production long ago. Remember, this one stopped in 2009, uh, there about. So now, uh, will you be able to see get one? I don't know. Uh, they are not, poop are not usually common cars. Um, now, which one should you go for, the manual or the automatic? I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, personally, go for manual, want to enjoy. Uh, this engine, specifically this engine, go for the manual version. Um, so, um, I don't know if there's any other thing to talk about. I know they all have the annoyances. Um, 
In terms of maintenance costs on the suspension, this is much easier and cheaper to maintain uh, the 406 coupe than this. This one has a um, complex, expensive suspension. However, it's sportier. So this is faster, makes sense, there's a way. However, this is sportier in terms of suspension. So you enjoy driving this one based on how safe it feels on high speed than this. This one is also safe to drive, but what I'm saying, this is hardcore suspension, sports suspension, while this is soft uh, suspension. Yeah, it can do the, it's not necessarily a sports suspension, but, um, you know, yeah, you can still do some crazy drive with it. However, this will serve you better on that. Um, I think the, the original design was to make this uh, also a sports suspension, make it valuable. Like this one has a valuable suspension in terms of the higher the vehicle speed, the stiffer or firmer it becomes, you know, so electronically control. So actually they meant to put it here. They put that option so that it appears some coupe has that thing. I don't know, you know, because the design need to have this. The valuable suspension, but most of the ones I've seen for seven for six VCs, both the saloon, cool, the station wagon, they don't have. I'm yet to see the one with valuable suspension. But whenever you come here, you see that that option they put the, the design in such a way you can mount it. Maybe somehow, not all, who knows. Um, likewise, this one has a valuable or uh, sports steering, um, while this also have. Um, which one feels safe, uh, sportier than the other? This is sportier. This is much heavier even when the vehicle is stationary. This is much softer, which means nothing though. In fact, um, remember, depending on how you want to look at it, the softer one, when the vehicle is, such, uh, the vehicle speed is kind of lower, yeah, it feels very, very light. Why this one? Yeah, it's light but still heavier than this at the same speed. So, um, so the thing is, one way or the other, you have something to gain on here and something to lose here, something to gain here, something to lose here. So that's why I say, um, based on the looks, this one last is much sportier on the looks, more aggressive, more masculine. Uh, this is faster, cheaper to maintain in terms of the suspension. Um, this one, the electric car is more complex, more sensitive, so it does not at what is it called? Tolerate abuse at all. Electric car, it does not tolerate it. While this uh, can, you could say tolerate it to some extent before it start giving you nightmares. So but this one doesn't even tolerate. If you try it, it deal with you mercilessly. Um, it's entering 30 minutes now. I think uh, it's better I shut it down. So this review, I'm not actually going to drive. Um, I've done videos on this one, driving on expressway. So you can go and watch it, go back to my old videos to see how it moves with the manual. Uh, this one I've driven with, um, done some videos, published it, uh, quite a number of them. You can also go and see how it drives with uh, in manual. I'm not sure I did it with automatic, when you had automatic transmission. There's no video on that. Um, so, which would you pick? For me, I will have the two. You know, because they are serving different purposes. One lacks something, the other has that, what this one lacks. Uh, this one has something, uh, or lacks something that this one has. You know, it all depends. It have to survive the two and then make up your mind. Or if you can't afford it, have the two. Um, so, I think I uh, can close it now. So that, um, um, okay, so um, so that's basically about it. The size wheel, uh, this is um, 17, if I'm not mistaken. No, okay, this is 16 wheel. Why, wow, this is uh, eight, 18. So uh, difference is there. So this 16 is 18. Um, 
So, funny or not, this car is for sale. If you are interested, um, I actually did a video recently and put the number of the owner. Uh, if you are interested, you can go and contact the owner to go and uh, do your inspection and uh, possibly buy. Um, so, actually, this one, this particular cover is in the boots here. Uh, now I removed it, here it is. So, let me put it back here. Um, so, um, the gear knob, the owner uh, is trying to, the leather has torn, so he removed it to go and uh, put some leather back. So, it's not like a, it's not a, so, I think I've said everything I need to say. Um, so, um, these are the only VCs Pojo Cook will find. Again, I hope I'm not mistaken. So, it's not up to you. They are already fading out of the market. Uh, so, this might be the only opportunity for you to have. Mine is not for sale. This one is for sale. So, if you're interested, um, Maybe I'll put a note number of the owner on this video so I go and uh, contact the person. If you live in Nigeria, the car location is Abuja. Um, you have to check and, uh, you know. So, okay, so till another time, we have this, another opportunity to like this to review two cars, two special cars, side by side, because these are special cars. They are not easily um, found. Uh, so, maybe in future we'll have something like that to review. Alright, so till next time.